Welcome to Civil Engineering Fanatics. Today we are going to start a new series on building materials and the first topic is timber. This video is about classification of timber. The topics covered in this video will be the introduction to timber, classification of timber based on the method of sourcing, the mode of growth, the classification of wood, modulus of elasticity, durability and availability of wood. Let's start. Now what is timber? Timber is defined as a wood that is suitable for building or carpentry and for various engineering and other purposes. This means all those woods that are available in nature cannot be used for engineering or construction activities. The figure shows the timber production process where the wood is being collected from nature. It is undergo several processes, treatment so that required strength and properties are achieved and then it is being sent to the market or directly used for construction activities. The figure also shows how the used timber is being recycled. Timber or wood as a building material possess several valuable properties. Among varied properties, some of them are low heat conductivity, amenability to mechanical working, low bulk density, relatively high strength. Timber has been used all before concrete or steel structure. Still, it is being in high demand and it's a competitive method of construction compared to steel and concrete construction. It is used for roofs, beams, girders, columns, and even for support for foundation, etc. Let's start the classification of timber as building material. The first classification is based on the method of sourcing. This is simple classification, which is classified as standing timber, rough timber, and converted timber. Standing timber is the timber that is obtained by cutting down a living or a standing tree. The tree is being cut in its live condition for any activities. Rough timber is the timber that is obtained after felling a tree. A tree can fell down due to natural disasters or due to some uh, or the aging issues of the tree. So we call it as rough timber. Converted timber indicates those timber which is being sawn and cut into suitable commercial sizes and available in the market, which can be used for construction activities. The second classification is a wide classification based on the mode of growth. Certain grow by width and certain grow by height. So that based on that, we have exogenous trees and endogenous trees. Before explaining this classification, you need to know in a timber cross section, the centermost portion is what we call as a pith. And all those concentric circles around the pith is what we call as annular rings. So these two important terms are very important for uh, understanding this classification. A detailed video will be made about the structure of timber in the next part. So let's discuss the classification in detail. Exogenous trees and endogenous trees. Exogenous trees grows in exterior direction, that is grows outwards in concentric circles around the center part of the cross section, that is the pith. So it increases by diameter, it increases by width. Endogenous trees, these trees grows inwards and they grow tall, they are thin, like coconut tree, bamboo are examples of endogenous trees. Exogenous trees show distinct concentric rings, as I showed before, and every year new, new concentric rings will be formed. And these rings are called as annual rings, as these rings are formed every year, annually. So to determine the age of the tree, we can actually count the annual rings as shown in the figure. But in case of endogenous trees, no such annual rings will be observed. This is an example of a coconut tree, which is an example of endogenous tree, which does not reveal any kind of annual ring. Next important property of exogenous trees is that they are mostly used for engineering purposes, but endogenous trees does not yield any kind of wood for engineering activities. Exogenous trees example are teak, chur, mahogany, and deoda. And endogenous trees, we have coconut tree, bamboo, cane, and palm. Now, exogenous trees, as I've shown before, have two classifications, that is coniferous trees and deciduous trees. So coniferous trees and deciduous trees is also a major and important classification uh, from which a major part of multiple choice questions are observed in PSC and other competitive exams. So let's Look into detail, the coniferous trees and deciduous trees. Classification of exogenous trees. As endogenous trees have less application or not used, we focus on exogenous trees. Exogenous trees can be coniferous or deciduous. Coniferous trees are called as evergreen trees with pointed leaves, while deciduous trees have broad leaf, so called as broad leaf trees. Coniferous trees yield soft wood, while deciduous trees yield hard wood. The soft wood from coniferous tree are light in color, light in weight, and they are weak. 
deciduous tree will yield hardwood which will be closely grained strong dark color durable and non resinous the coniferous tree as the softwood is light in color the annual rings are visible distinctly but in case of deciduous tree as they are dark in color the annual rings are not seen distinctly examples of coniferous trees are deodar cedar and pine deciduous trees example are teak mahogany shisham oak and the most engineering purpose we use deciduous trees so let's look into the next classification that is based on the type of wood this is a commercial classification and it is classified as softwood and hardwood softwood is also called pine wood or coniferous wood hardwood or leaf wood or non coniferous wood let's look into the classification in terms of annual rings the softwood as mentioned below is coniferous it is light in color so the annual rings are very distinct hardwood it is dark in color so the annual rings are less distinct and narrow color is light and dark for softwood and hardwood respectively next property is fire resistant softwood have poor fire resistant compared with hard hardwood with hardwood having moderate fire resistant there are medullary rays which are less distinct in softwood it is very distinct in case of hardwood strength talking about strength in case of a cross section of a timber when we cut the timber longitude direction we see the grains are along the length so the strength is always or the strength along grain direction and perpendicular direction is always studied to understand how uh, strong the timber is so this is the direction grain direction is parallel or along the long length of the timber and the perpendicular direction is also shown now we will compare the strength property number 5 that is strength it is strong in tension or direct pull that is weak in compression and shear this means that the strong along the grain direction that is softwood but in case of hardwood it has good grains thick grains so the strength along the grain direction as well as the direction perpendicular will be same so it will be strong in tension compression as well as shear why is softwood weak in compression and shear because in perpendicular direction the strength of softwood will be weak now next is regarding the structure softwood has resinous with straight fibers which can be easily split but hardwood is non resinous and they are closely grained now in case of weight softwood are light in weight hardwoods are heavy the examples of each classification which is very important for multiple choice question softwood or pine wood or coniferous wood examples are pine fir spruce deodar cedar kale walnut semal which are commonly used for building construction now hardwood leaf wood or non coniferous wood like teak sal shisham mahogany oak babul neem mango etc used for doors furniture joinery etc now next classification is based on the modulus of elasticity modulus of elasticity classification is based on the indian standard code 399 that is the classification of commercial timber and a special zonal distribution based on this the modulus of elasticity is actually determined by the bending test and we have group a group b and group c group a is those timber with modulus of elasticity greater than 12.5 kN per mm square group b category of timber is those timber with modulus of elasticity between 9.8 to 12.5 kN per mm square and group c have an e value between 5.6 and 9.8 kN per mm square these values are very important for exam point of view and next one is classification based on durability of timber code is IS 399 1963 same graveyard test is conducted on a 24 into 2 into 2 inch wood specimen which is buried underground and for a specific duration and we look how well the wood came out after a period so how degraded it is so if it it is high durability if it sustain greater than 120 months if it's moderate durability it will sustain between 60 to 120 months if it has low durability it will stay only less than 60 months next classification is based on availability of timber and based on the same code we classify as x that is most common if it is most common we get 14 15 meter cube or more per year if it's y that is a common grade we get 355 to 1415 meter cubes per year now if it is less common timber we get around less than 355 meter cubes per year hope you understood the basic classification of timber and their features and examples the next video will be regarding the structure of timber and their features and the role of each part of a timber
For more videos like this, subscribe to Civil Engineering Fanatics.